Do you have a question about today's program? You can text it to us live. Text your question to 425-477-9950. That's 425-477-9950. Now, back to the show. Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round. It's a time of day for Virgin Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea. There's so much to do. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. Learn and have fun. Cool creatures to meet. It's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Virtual Small Fry School here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Rebecca, and I'm very excited you're here today. Bienvenidos a Virtual Small Fry School aquí en Alaska Sea Life Center. Este mes es el mes de la herencia hispana, y por eso este episodio será bilingüe. So this month is Hispanic Heritage Month, and to celebrate, this episode will be bilingual. If you have any questions during our program, please feel free to text them to the number in the description below. Si tienes algunas preguntas, por favor, mándanos un mensaje al número que se encuentra en la descripción abajo. Y conmigo se encuentra mi amigo Alex. Uh, with us today, we have our friend Alex. And so for that reason, we are wearing masks to stay safe, para mantenernos seguros. So last week, we talked about the food chain. La semana pasada, hablamos de la cadena alimenticia. Y aprendimos de cómo los animales mantienen la energía para hacer diferentes cosas como brincar y correr, comer. So we learned about how different animals uh, get the energy. And some of our friends sent us their work. Algunos amigos nos mandaron su trabajo. Porque hicimos una cadena alimenticia. We made our own food chain. We also had a very important question. What eats sea otters? Tuvimos una pregunta muy importante. ¿Qué animales comen nutrias marinas? Do you remember? ¿Te acuerdas? What eats the sea otters? ¿Qué animales comen nutrias marinas? Well, we talked about the orcas, the sharks. Platicamos de las ballenas orca, el tiburón blanco, que comen las nutrias marinas. Pero no platicamos de los nativos de Alaska. We did not talk about the Alaska natives that for a very long time harvested sea otters to eat for food. Por mucho tiempo cosecharon las nutrias marinas para comer. Alaska natives did not hunt them for their fur, did not harvest them for their fur. They wanted them to, to eat. Las uh, cosecharon para comer. That's really important to remember. So today, we are going to talk about, can you guess it? Fish. Hoy pl vamos a platicar de los peces. Y quiero que tomemos un momento. I want us to take one minute to just look at the fish behind me. Vamos a usar nuestros ojos. We're going to use our eyes, and we're going to make observations on the fish behind us, OK? You might see the, the screen, but that's OK. So what do you see? ¿Qué miras? How many fish do you see? ¿Cuántos peces hay aquí adentro? ¿Qué están haciendo los peces? What are they doing? So fish live in water. What are they doing behind me? ¿Qué están haciendo los peces aquí? They're swimming. Yeah. 
So, this is my friend, este es mi amigo, un pez. Y vamos a platicar de las partes del cuerpo de los peces. We're going to talk about fish body parts that help them live in their habitat. A habitat is a fancy scientific word for an animal's home. Un habitat es el hogar de un animal. Y esa palabra científica que nosotros usamos. Los peces tienen aletas para nadar. Fish have fins to swim in the water. Can you show me your fins? Enseñame tus aletas. Your fins. And swim in the water. Swim in the water. Nada en el agua. Great fish. They also have different body parts that help them survive. Tienen otras partes del cuerpo que les ayudan a sobrevivir. Por ejemplo, tienen una boca. They have a mouth. Right? We see our wolf eel eating. Vemos este pez comiendo. Do you have a mouth? Yeah, you do. And we use it to eat as well. They also have eyes because they need to see. Tienen ojos porque también necesitan ver, como nosotros también tenemos ojos. Wow, look at that fish. Mira ese pez. Mmm, yummy. Delicioso. Fish also need oxygen just like we do. Los peces también necesitan oxígeno como nosotros. And you can see the fish swimming around here using their fins. So here we see the plankton. If you remember, the plankton use the energy of the sunlight to make food. El plankton usa la energía del sol para hacer comida Igual como el cachillullo, just like the kelp. And the kelp and the plankton make oxygen. El plankton y el cachillullo hacen oxígeno, que nosotros usamos para respirar. But we also use that oxygen we also use to breathe. And the fish need it too. Y los peces también. Entonces, vamos a jugar un juego. We're going to play a game. We're going to identify the different body parts of the fish. And you can play with an adult around you. Or you can do it yourself, whatever you'd like. Vamos a jugar un juego y vamos a identific identificar las partes del cuerpo de un pez. Puedes jugar con un adulto contigo o puedes hacerlo solo, como tú quieras. ¿Listos? Ready? OK. So, we're going to guess that body part. Adivina la parte del cuerpo. So, this body part helps the fish move around. Esta parte del cuerpo ayuda al pez a nadar. ¿Te acuerdas qué es? Do you remember? Fins, yes, aletas. This body part helps the fish breathe oxygen. Esa parte del cuerpo ayuda al pez a respirar el oxígeno. Do you remember what it is? Gills, branquias. And this body part protects the fish. I don't think I mentioned it, but do you know what it is? ¿Sabes qué parte del cuerpo es? They're scales. In Spanish, son escamas. Good job, friends. Buen trabajo. So, we are going to play, uh, sorry, we're going to do our activity today. And while we're doing this activity, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them, and Alex is going to help us out today and read your questions. Vamos a hacer la actividad, y si tienen preguntas, 
Por favor, manda esas preguntas al número y mi amigo Alex las va a leer. O tal vez yo si las preguntas son en español. OK. Oh. OK. We have our fish. We're going to make a fish today. Vamos a hacer un pez hoy. Y tenemos nuestros papeles. We have our papers that we're going to use. Tenemos tijeras. We have scissors. And we have glue. Resistol. And to color, we also have color pencils. Y tenemos lápices para colorear también. You can use whatever colors you want. Do you remember this body part? ¿Te acuerdas de esta parte del cuerpo? It's called a fin. Can you say fin? Fin. En español, aleta. ¿Puedes decir aleta? Aleta. We also see the scales in the fish. Vemos las escamas. We see their eyes, los ojos, their mouth, and their gills are hiding. Sus branquias están escondiendo. So we are going to color. Take whatever colors you want. I am going to color my fish. This one, it's a little bit red. Yo lo voy a colorear un poco rojo. Do you have a favorite fish? ¿Tienes un pez favorito? So Rebecca, I'm actually, actually going to jump in there, Rebecca, because we just got ah. a text. Someone wanted to know what your favorite fish was. Oh, thank you. What's my favorite fish? Hmm. That's a great question. So, my favorite fish is the flatfish. Yeah. And it's my favorite. We are going to have an episode later this month about the flatfish. Vamos a tener un episodio este, después en este mes sobre el pez um, que está un poquito plano y un poquito delgadito. Este, y vamos a hablar sobre esos peces. We're going to talk about the flatfish because they're so cool. And I really want you to know about them. Thank you for asking, friends. How's your coloring coming along? Do you like to color? I like to color a lot. A mí me gusta colorear. And I'm going to do their eyes blue. Voy a hacer sus ojos azules. Friends, do you speak another language? Hablan otro lenguaje? I'd like to know what you speak. If it's English, that's great. Si nada más hablas inglés, muy bien. But if you do speak another language, you can text us and let us know. I'd like to know. Oh, sorry, friends, you can hear the elevator. <laughs> we do have other people working in the building right now. <laughs> Tenemos otras personas que están trabajando en el edificio. Um, I am coloring the fins now. Voy a colorear las aletas. And there are so many fish in the world. Hay muchos peces en el agua. And did you know that sharks are also a type of fish? ¿Sabías que los tiburones también son un tipo de pez? Yeah, isn't that crazy? 
Uh, maybe these two questions will uh, go together then. Yeah. Uh, first of all, do the fish eat each other? And we, we had someone ask, do we have any sharks at the Sea Life Center? Great question. Great questions, I should say. Muy buenas preguntas. Este, en español, la primera pregunta es si los peces se comen el uno al otro. Y la segunda pregunta, que si tenemos tiburones aquí en el centro. We do not have sharks here at the Sea Life Center, um, unfortunately, although they're really cool. We do have their cousins as well, skates, here in Alaska, um, which are also a type of fish. No tenemos tiburones aquí en el centro, pero sí este, tenemos un relativo de ello, un familiar, que son uh, las rayas. Do the fish eat each other? Alex, I, maybe you can help me out with this one. Um, tal vez Alex me puede ayudar. Do, you, do the fish eat each other? Yeah, well, you showed that clip earlier of the wolf yeah. eel getting fed. Uh, and so we feed them, and we'll feed them other fish or like chopped up squid. Uh, but when we put them in the tanks, we don't want them to eat each other. So we will uh, make sure there's not species that are going to eat each other in those tanks. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. I'll translate that into Spanish for our uh, other friends that are watching. Um, cuando ponemos los peces ahí en las ex exhibiciones, ponemos peces que no se comen el uno al otro, pero si hay, uh, les damos de comer peces a veces, depende del día, uh, como vieron en el video, de un, el pez que estaba comiendo otros, otro pez, este, pero también comen calamar, comen otros animales diferentes que les damos aquí, pero no, no se comen el uno al otro. Ok, friends, muy bien. I am now going to use my scissors, voy a usar mis tijeras para cortar alrededor de las líneas, to cut around the lines, the, do, the dashed lines. Please be careful, hazlo con cuidado, and if you need help from an adult, please ask them. Si necesitas ayuda, pregúntale a alguien a tu alrededor que te ayude. And I want to see your fish. So if you feel comfortable, feel free to share pictures of your fish with us to the number as well. Yo quiero ver el pez que ustedes hicieron o que están haciendo. Y si se sienten cómodos, pueden mandarnos unas fotos de su pez. Can you say fish? Fish. That's fish in Spanish. Alex, do you have a favorite fish? Ooh, my favorite fish here is that wolf eel, actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it real quick. All right, we saw the wolf eel earlier, and uh, I love this fish. Uh, she's actually very sweet. Uh, we go in, we hand feed her, and she'll just take the food from you. Uh, and sometimes we'll pass her back and forth between a couple divers. So that's my favorite fish. Thanks for sharing, Alex. That's a pretty cool fish. We have a question here from Naomi. Naomi! Naomi in Eagle River. Hi, Naomi. <laughs> Uh, do the same kind of fish eat each other, right? Like, uh, uh, you know, um, cannibals, I guess. Think, great question, Naomi. Um, Alex is going to answer that for you. Yeah, yeah. there are some fish that uh, do have some cannibalism where they'll eat each other. Um, usually, you're going to not see that in the same species. Um, you'll see it a lot where... Uh, different species within the same type of fish will eat each other. Um, but when it comes to things like 
you know, rockfish, for example, that start really small and they can get really large. Uh, when you're small, you know, you're easy food for your neighbors. So it, one of the uh, problems with those fish or, or problems growing up as those fish is you're very small and you're living around these really big fish that just go after small things. So if you're a little tiny baby fish, you probably don't want to hang out with the adults uh, because they could eat you. And it does happen in subspecies. Wow. I just learned too, Naomi. <laughs> so now I'm going to take my fins. Voy a tomar mis aletas y las voy a pegar al pez con resistol. I'm going to take my fins and glue them to the fish with glue. If you don't have glue, you can use tape. Okay, fun. Oh, I love this glue. It's so purple. Me gusta este pez. Este resistol es morado. It's fun watching on the camera. It's very purple. <laughs> <laughs> it's muy morado. Isn't it fun? Do, what's your favorite color? My favorite is blue, and I would love to see blue glow. Oh, that was, <laughs> that's a lot of glue. Okay, there we go. This is our tail fin. This is our dorsal fin, which goes at the top. Es la aleta dorsal y va arriba. Here we go. We have our side fins here. And this little one Esta pequeña va a salir acá. Yeah. Oopsie daisy. Oh, we're getting some pictures of uh, <gasps> some of Yay! our viewers filling in their fish. So that's exciting. Yay. Always like seeing our viewers doing the activities. Yeah. That's really fun. It is really fun. It makes me happy that you're doing it with me. Nos están mandando fotos nuestros amigos de, sus, de su pez. Y a Alex y a mí nos gusta cuando hacen las actividades con nosotros y nos mandan sus fotos. Well, friends, look at my fish. Miren a mi pez. Oh, I forgot to color in the bubbles. Let's get fun with this and do pink bubbles. Vamos a hacer burbujas rositas. Here we go. Aquí está. Bubble. How many bubbles do we have? Let's count together. Vamos a contar las burbujas juntos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ahora en español. Uno, dos, Tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Siete burbujas, seven bubbles. Oh, here's a fun question. Yeah. I uh, wanted to know if we had beta fish at the Sea Life Center. <gasps> so like those, those very colorful aquarium fish. We do not. Uh, unfortunately, they are very pretty. Um, so everything we have at the Alaska Sea Life Center is an Alaskan fish. Um, and mostly we focus on saltwater. We do have a couple freshwater instances like in the um, little river ecosystem. Wow, friends, I did my fish and I want to see pictures of yours. I, Alex told me that some of you are already sending your photos of your really cool fish, and I'm so excited to see them. Uh, Alex me ha dicho que ustedes están mandando fotos de su pez, y estoy muy emocionada, y si no han mandado una foto, por favor, mándenla. Okay. 
Okay, friends. So, just to summarize everything, this is our friend fish, and it has fins. Tiene aletas para nadar. It has eyes to see. Tiene ojos, just like we do, como nosotros. Tiene una boca. It has a mouth to eat para comer. It has gills. We can't see them in this one. Tiene branquias because it also needs oxygen. También necesita oxígeno to live. And it has scales. Tiene escamas que lo protege, to protect itself. What do we have that protects us? ¿Qué tenemos nosotros que nos protege? We have our skin. Yeah. Nuestra piel nos protege. Yeah, it protects us. So, um, for the week, if you want, I have this activity for you. Tengo esta actividad durante la semana. You can also download it. It's in the description below and print it out. Puedes este, imprimirla. Está en la descripción abajo. And what you're just going to do is look at the number. That's the number one. So you can take goldfish or you can take beans or anything you have at home and practice your counting. Vamos a practicar a contar. ¿Qué número es este? Uno. Vamos a poner ahí un frijol o una uva o lo que tengas en casa. Lo ponemos ahí. Y después, and after, what is this? Number two. El número dos. And so on until you get to this number. Hasta que llegas a este número. But this is during the week if you want to do something fun. Esto es durante la semana si quieres uh, practicar y hacer algo, uh, algo divertido. So, friends, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Quiero darles las gracias por estar aquí hoy. Um, y quiero darles las gracias también a Alaska 529 por haber hecho este episodio posible. I want to make, uh, thank Alaska 529 for sponsoring this episode. And stick around for story time. We have, what's it like to be a fish? Tenemos este libro. Este, por favor, quédense con nosotros para escuchar la historia. So, I hope to see you next week. Next week, we'll talk about skates and rays. How exciting. And yeah, I'll see you next week here at 11 a.m. on YouTube. What's it like to be a fish? By Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Holly Keller. What's it like to be a fish? By Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Holly Keller. This is a bluefin tuna. This is a swordfish and a manta ray. What's it like to be a fish? This is a veil tail goldfish and this is a calico goldfish. Fish live in water, in lakes, ponds, we have a grass pickerel, a lake whitefish, and another lake whitefish. That makes one, two lake whitefish. We have smallmouth buffalo, a coho salmon. We see coho salmon in Alaska, and some common shiners. We should count how many common shiners are on this page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight common shiners. Aquariums and even plastic bags. This person looks like they just went to the pet store and got two new little fish. Do you think this person is going to put this fish into this aquarium? Maybe. This aquarium 
has a couple other fish in it. A fantail goldfish, an angelfish, a hatchet fish, common goldfish, and a bleeding heart tetra. Your pet goldfish can live in a bowl. You can watch the golden fish slip over and under the castle, hide among the water plants, and glide quietly around in their underwater world. There's a common goldfish here, and here, and two over here, and this fish is a calico goldfish. How many orange fish do you see? One, two, three, four, five. Five orange fish. A fish's body is just right for living underwater. Just as your body is right for living on land, you can swim, but a fish can swim better. A fish's sleek body is the perfect shape for swimming. Fins stick out from the fish's body. They help the fish to swim. A goldfish's tail fin pushes it through the water. Six other fins steady, steer, or stop it. This common goldfish has many fins all over its body. It has two pectoral fins, two pelvic fins, one anal fin, one big broad caudal fin or tail fin, and one big broad dorsal fin. Most fish have skin that is covered with scales Scales help fish to swim, too. The scales are hard and clear. They overlap like shingles on a roof. The smooth, slick scales let fish slide easily through the water. A clear slime covers the scales. It helps fish glide through the water, too. Scales and slime also help to keep a fish healthy. The stiff scales protect a fish's delicate skin from cuts and scrapes. Many germs in the water get stuck in a fish's slime coating and are washed away before they can make the fish sick. Both scales and slime keep water from seeping into the fish's skin. This is an arrowtail goldfish with scales covered with slime. And two more common shiners. When fish swim, they swing their tail fins back and forth and wave their other fins. They look as though they're flying through the water Look at all these people around this pond with fish in it. Can you count how many fish are in the pond? One, two, three. This cat doesn't seem very interested in the fish in the pond. If you watch your goldfish you'll see that they open and close their mouths all day and all night. They look as if they're drinking water, but they're not. They're breathing. You breathe all day and all night too, but you can't breathe underwater the way fish do. Fish breathe with their gills. You breathe with your lungs. You breathe in, air goes, to lungs inside your body, your body takes the oxygen that you need from the air. Then you breathe out the parts of the air that you don't need. 
this person is breathing oxygen in, it's going to their lungs, and when they breathe out, they are losing the parts of the air that they don't need. Fish need oxygen too. There is oxygen in water, just as there is oxygen in air. A goldfish opens its mouth and lets some water in. When the fish closes its mouth, the water flows over the gills inside its body. The fish's body takes the oxygen it needs from the water. After passing over the gills, the water leaves the fish's body through gill openings. For a goldfish, opening and closing its mouth is just like breathing in and out. This fish has water with oxygen coming in to its mouth that passes over its gills. When the water leaves the gills, it's bringing parts of the air that the fish doesn't need back out. We have some fish over here. This is a comet. This is a black goldfish. And this is another veil tail goldfish. Fish need food just as you do, but they eat underwater. At feeding time, watch your goldfish flip their tails. They race to the top of the bowl, snap at their food, and gulp it down. They need only a tiny pinch of fish flakes each day. Good fish flakes are a mixture of ground up flies, fish, shrimp, crab, oats, corn, carrots, and vitamins. These are two veil tail goldfish. What colors are these fish? Awesome, orange, and it looks to be white. Fish in the wild do not have someone to feed them every day. Many fish eat tiny plants and animals so small that you need a microscope to see them. Bigger fish feed on worms, crabs, shrimp, and other fish. Usually, big fish, like this albacore tuna, eat medium-sized fish, like this Atlantic mackerel, and medium-sized fish, like this Atlantic mackerel, eat small fish, like this striped anchovy. This is part of what we call the food chain. Fish are cold-blooded. This means that their body temperature matches the temperature of the water around them. Be sure to place your goldfish bowl in a spot where the temperature will stay a steady 65 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the temperature fish need to be to stay healthy. This fish's temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of the water around the fish is also 72 degrees Fahrenheit. You are warm-blooded. When you are healthy, your body temperature is about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Your body stays this temperature by itself, whether the air around you is hot or cold. This person has a body temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's snowing and the temperature around the person is 28 degrees Fahrenheit. This person has the same body temperature as this person, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. But all around this person, the air is 101 degrees Fahrenheit. Whew, that's pretty hot.
Sometimes, goldfish swish their tails and zip around the bowl. Other times, they look as if they've stopped moving. But they haven't. Their fins are always moving, even when they rest. Fish don't sleep as you do. They rest by moving very, very slowly. Fish's eyes are always open. They have no eyelids, so their eyes stay open even when they rest. Fish don't need eyelids, as you do, and they don't need tears either. The water keeps their eyes washed. There is usually not enough light underwater to bother fish's eyes. Be sure not to put your goldfish in the sun because it might be too bright for them. We have many fish on this page. We have a black telescope eye, two common goldfish, a calico, and an arrow tail. With a sleek body, fins, scales, slime, and gills, a fish lives as naturally underwater as you do on land. Goldfish swim, breathe, eat, and rest in water. They slip over and under their castle, hide among water plants, and glide quietly around in their underwater world.